This is my 2018 Fiat Talento van. And judging by the comments on the last video about my new Honda Grom, there was as much, if not more, interest in the van than there was in the bike. And I get that. There's not an awful lot to get excited about with the Grom. And the van certainly has more quirks and features if you're into that sort of thing. So in this video, I'm going to take you on the three-year journey I went on to create what I refer to as my mobile office. Then I'm going to get it out on the road, see how it drives, and then I'm going to give it a rocket score. The with garage in the title might be overstating things a little bit, but I did design my mobile office to be able to take a motorbike and camping cars and professional van conversions, call the space at the rear a garage, so you'll forgive the clickbait. First of all, let me tell you what this van is not. YouTube is awash with van life videos showing couples deeply in love who buy an ex-builder's or a courier's van and then post a time-lapse video of how they spent three months fitting it out in half a ton of IKEA furniture, decking, solar panels, cushions, artificial plants, spice racks and shower units that unfold from one of the rear doors. A small minority of these couples then proceeds to go on a gap year around Europe or North America posting videos as they go. And good on them. If you're happy living 24-7 in 8 square meters, then by all means, knock yourselves out. I suspect, however, and my suspicions are borne out by the dozens of very unused looking van conversions up for sale on Facebook Marketplace and eBay, that many of these couples try living in their creations for a few nights, realize just how awful it is, and give up. It's a bit like Lego. Once you've built your fort or your windmill, there's no fun in it. The only thing you can do with it is smash it and build something else. The fun is in the build, not in the use. As an illustration of what I mean, I would urge you to check out Vandemonium's superb video on spending a night or two in his converted van. David, the protagonist, doesn't deliberately set out to ridicule van life, or romanticise it for that matter. It's just a very honest, down-to-earth rendition of him cooking, showering and sleeping within the confines of his Toyota Proace. I don't often recommend other YouTubers' videos, in fact I think this is probably the first time, but if you are thinking of doing a van conversion, please, please take 10 minutes to watch this particular video. You'll thank me later. Link in the description. So my mobile office is a very modest design and even referring to it as a conversion might be stretching things a bit. I wanted to be able to turn it back into a panel van in just a few minutes, so hardly anything I've done is a permanent fixture. There's basically this freestanding bench come storage box, a desk or swivel table, a power source, a fridge for my lunch, and a few frilly bits to make it feel a bit more comfortable. I have no intention of either washing or cooking in this van, much less sleeping all night on an incline with my head six inches away from a chemical toilet that's slowly fermenting my turds. There's a reason houses are so popular. So at this point you're probably wondering how it could possibly take me three years to build as I've apparently done so little to it. Well, allow me to explain. First, the choice of van. I ordered this Fiat Talento, a rebadged Renault Traffic Opel Vauxhall Vivaro back in late 2017, new. I had a couple of Ford Transits before this, but I wanted a more compliant ride this time around. The VW T6 is a popular choice, of course, but they're quite expensive, and I thought the load bay was just a little bit too small. So, I went with this, and the most powerful engine I could get was the 145 horsepower twin turbo. Um, but the top at one trim level, which essentially gave me the usual driving comforts like air conditioning, cruise control and sat nav. I didn't get the very top trim as this came with a fully painted bodywork including the side protection strips and more importantly a painted rear bumper which everyone uses as a step so I preferred the black plastic. I optioned the 17 inch alloy wheels just because they looked a bit nicer than the standard 16 inch although this made may have been a mistake as I recently inquired about fitting some BF Goodrich all-terrain tyres and was told the size I needed wasn't available. 
The decision to go with Fiat rather than one of the other clones was because it offered more equipment, has a better dealer network here in Southern Europe, and because in my opinion, the Fiat is the best looking, or perhaps more accurately, the least ugly of the four. There's not a great deal to see in the cabin. I've soundproofed the roof, floor, doors and bulkhead with Dynamat and Dynaliner, and also lined the bulkhead with four-way stretch carpeting just to make it feel a bit cosier and cover up the unsightly dynamats. I also swapped out the factory door speakers for a pair of JL Audio units. These gave a big improvement, but I wasn't completely satisfied with the lack of bass, so I added this JL Audio subwoofer under the passenger seat. The overall result is excellent, especially combined with the soundproofing. Dynamat is expensive and not especially attractive stuff, but it is good. Other additions include a next base dash cam hardwired to the fuse box, a full width rubber mat as these are easier to keep clean than carpet, and some little mats on the doorsteps just to make it feel a little less utilitarian. The first job in the back was to line the floor, walls and roof with more Dynaliner and Dynamat. For those unfamiliar with these products, Dynaliner basically stops metal panels resonating and Dynaliner is a heat insulator. To cover up the unsightly soundproofing and so as not to lose any of the van's usable width, I made these panel covers that I cut to size from 4mm MDF before carpeting. Now many van converters in my opinion, go a bit over the top with the carpeting and it can look a bit of a mess. It does cover up a myriad of sins, but I think if you use it too liberally on every conceivable surface, it can make the van look a bit like the inside of a padded cell, to be honest. So I deliberately left a fair bit of bare metal on display and the panels can be removed if necessary. I decided not to cover the dyne liner on the roof Fitting a board would look nice, but it would again rob me of five or six precious centimetres, and as I rarely use the van in the dark, I have little use for the overhead lights that many builders integrate into the ceiling. I designed the bench in two parts, bolted together so that each section could be removed more easily. It's not fixed to the van in any way and is held in place by its own weight on the carpet. I thought it might help to strap it in place, but touch wood, it hasn't moved at all during driving and in the event of a serious accident the bulkhead is there to protect the people in the cab. It was built using 15mm ply and then clear coated to keep things as light as possible inside. Dimensions are 180 x 50 x 50cm giving a total storage volume of 450 litres, roughly equivalent to the boot of a compact car. Plenty of camp space for camping chairs, tools and the swivel table should I ever need to stow it. Now, the table was one of the more expensive parts of the build. The arm is a Lagoon, L Lagun, not really sure how it's pronounced, swivel table base, which I ordered online. It was about 160 pounds, I think, but it is really very good quality, very sturdy and well designed. It even comes with the necessary hardware to bolt it to a vertical surface as I've done. The vertical leg can be adjusted for height and removed from the base plate if necessary to allow the table to be stowed. The horizontal arm allows for 360 degree movement and the wooden table top, which is not provided in the kit, so you have to source one or make your own, also spins 360 degrees, allowing for infinite adjustability, depending on whether you're using it as a work desk or a drinks table with a second person. I then bought the thickest gym mat that I could find from a sports outlet and cut it to size. The plywood is rough enough and the mat sticky enough for it not to move around when the van is on the move and the table leg also serves to hold it in place. Now one of the reasons the van took me three years to build is that I deliberately took my time. Much of the work was done last year during lockdown as something to do and I was in no particular hurry to finish because we weren't really allowed to drive around much anyway. Many of the things I've bought were finds, I wasn't particularly looking for them. Um, but stumbled across them in a shop and thought, hmm, that would go well in the van. The floor is a case in point. Originally I had a bare resin board on it with Dynamat and household insulation foam underneath, and I was struggling to find something suitable. Parquet wood was too fancy and lino was too plasticky, and traditional household or car carpeting would be no good for putting a motorbike in on. Um, I was in a DIY store at the beginning of the first lockdown last year when the 
DIY centres were just about the only places allowed to open and just happened to come across a roll of this carpeting which is sort of halfway between doormat and automobile floor mat material. It's soft enough for bare feet but tough enough to resist the dirt from the bike's tyres and abrasive enough to hold everything in place. I'm afraid I can't link to it in the description as I've only ever seen this once in a Lisbon hardware store. So chances of you finding it are pretty slim I'm afraid. Curtains, yes they look a bit naff and I've already said I never sleep in the van so why did I bother? Well, despite the very dark privacy film I put on the windows it is possible to shine a torch through the glass and get a pretty good idea of what's inside especially at night if you press your nose up against the window so I use the curtains when I'm carrying bikes or other valuable objects if I have to park outside at night in a hotel car park for example I'm quite proud of this idea, my Bluetooth speaker holder or 3 euro bicycle water bottle holder as it's more commonly called. I was going to fit some car speakers to the side panels but this solution seemed so much more practical and once again can be easily removed when I sell the van. And so the garage, how and well why? The how is easy, I just left a big space opposite the bench so that I could put the bike in there. Uh, I put the front wheel in the chock and then lashed the frame of the bike to the sides of the van using ratchet straps and the factory tie down points. Once I get the tail tidy fitted to the grom I'm hoping it will be short enough to fit in widthways across the bulkhead which should enable me to get two bikes in there more easily. Costs? Well material for the bench was about 250 plus 30 euros for the mat, 160 for the swivel table, 400 euros for the power bank, uh, 700 euros, although that wasn't strictly necessary to upgrade the front speakers and subwoofer. The fridge is about 12 years old, but new ones I think are about 300 euros. There's also about 2,000 euros worth of dynamat in there, but I used to be a wholesale distributor of the stuff, so it didn't cost me anything like that, and I certainly wouldn't have used it so liberally had I not had access to trade prices. So let's say 500 euros for that. Finally, the stretch carpeting and glue probably came to around 120 and the carpet on the floor was about 50. Now, of course, I'm not counting my time or items that I also use in our house and just borrow, as it were, when I'm using the van, like the Bluetooth speaker. But the grand total, to give you a very rough estimate, comes to about 2,500 euros, which is about 2,200 pounds or 3,000 dollars. So all things considered, it's a fairly straightforward, relatively affordable conversion. I could of course add other things like solar panels on the roof, but I'm never really away long enough to need these, and I can keep the power bank charged up at home. It's no camper van of course, and I can't do much in it other than work, relax, and take the bikes out into the beautiful countryside we have here once I've finished my emails, but I'm fine with that. Personally, I'd rather have lunch in one of the hundreds of restaurants rather than battle with camping stoves and tins of processed food and if necessary I can wash and sleep in a hotel. Van lifers are not always welcome in certain parts of Europe and the Portuguese police can often be seen checking up on camper vans to make sure the owners are not overnighting illegally. So I think a discreet day van or mobile office offers a number of advantages over a full-on van conversion. Anyway, I hope this has been of some interest to those of you who asked for more information about my van. If you'd like a bit more detail on my Honda Grom or any of the other bikes I have, then please feel free to check out my other videos. But for now, thanks for watching. <laughs>